Hi there, this is Clayton Hicks, CEO and founder of H7 Network. Uh, and this is Behind the Network with Jerry Deere of GLD and Enterprises. And this is take two. <laughs> this Thanks for coming good, on, Clayton. Jerry. <laughs> How's it going, man? I'm doing great, doing great, <laughs> doing great. At least 12 or 14 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could freeze that smile you had going on there. <laughs> good. Jerry, Jerry, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, let's see. Um, I was uh, raised on a cattle farm not too far from where I am now. I bought a, a home and property near where my parents' uh, family farm was so I could stay close to them later on in years. But um, originally came up in 4-H and took care of cattle, did all that sort of stuff. Um, would Decided to go into school for engineering. I actually started in pre-med. I don't think I said that before. No. Um, Spent two years in pre-med before I decided I really just hated it. I was, I was good at it, but it, I just didn't like it. It was really bad. So I came up in a mechanical family, so I figured engineering was the right way to go. So I did that. Um, in school, uh, I did a lot of different things. I was a freelance writer for the newspapers, and I also played piano in restaurants uh, to pay for my schooling. Wow. Um, I grew up learning to how to, learned how to use a bullwhip, so I turned that into – something I can make money on doing shows and lessons and things. And I still do all of that. Um, but I think later on, I, I really decided because I helped my family with their businesses that I'm not good at working for other people. So I traded somewhere down the line. I traded one boss for like 40, however many I'm working for today. I got to look at the job board. There's, you know, how many, of you, you know, that from being, oh, a, yeah. being yeah. an entrepreneur, you, you trade the one boss. You think I'm going to be self-employed. There's no such thing, guys. There's just, <laughs> You're working for 50 people now. You're working for a whole lot more than that. So yeah, thousands. Yeah, Thousands of people. It's crazy. So yeah. you, uh, I decided to go into business on my own. I started out as an IT firm because that's what I was really doing more of was uh, programming and database development and computers. And um, I was doing the marketing and the PR side at the same time because I had such an end with all the news uh, organizations. But it kind of went the other way. The IT stuff dropped off a little more as machinery got more reliable. And then you got the geek squad types and all that came in. Everybody was all of a sudden doing on-site repairs. Um, and just thought, you know what, at some point I'm going to be too old to be crawling around under somebody's desk, plugging stuff in. Sure. So I just stuck with the writing part of it and the, and the PR and the marketing side of work for newspapers and anybody that would have me. Um, I fast forward, you know, back to the 2010, 10 years ago. Um, some of the stuff I was doing for the newspapers, I got a Pulitzer nomination, which was very cool. Freelancers wow. don't get that very often. Um, mm. but it, you know, it just kind of became what it is now. And uh, on a personal level, I still, I do a lot of music. I still play music with my family. Um, yeah. I go to jazz clubs, things like that. And I'm looking at across from my desk, I've got an old vintage, you know, duplicate record player with, with a, a jazz record on it right now that I had playing here when I was working earlier. So music's a big part of my life too. That's awesome. So growing up on a farm, uh, did you learn how to play the spoons? Fortunately, no. Um, <laughs> but we did for the last 26 years, we have had a family band. And, no kidding. Yeah. And the band actually got big enough that we had to get a tour bus. And we had all this stuff. And you can find it. It's called the Brothers and Company Entertainers. There's YouTube videos and everything. But I incorporated all the variety show stuff into the music. Yeah. So although we didn't have spoons, we had badly tuned banjos and oh. fiddles that had to be tweaked so hard that you just wanted to plug your ears and we were bleeding. <laughs> and the only way out of the band up to this point was either to die or have some kind of stroke or be divorced. <laughs> Otherwise, you're stuck in it. So there's three of us left after all these years. There's three of us left. <clears throat> and we, we still play a couple times a month. That's awesome, man. So... <laughs> So jug. Um, I did learn to play the jug. <laughs> you did play the jug. There I we did go. Learn how to play the jug. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. So I okay, for my grandfather to stop drinking out of it first. <laughs> he put it down. Okay, come out of it now. <laughs> that's awesome. So okay, all right. So GLD Enterprises. Yes. So uh, yes. let's list a few of the services you offer, and then let's try to unpack a few. Okay. Okay. So let's list uh, them. Well, first. we're a marketing advertising agency. Um, we're not a digital marketer. There's a lot of, you know, I, I think I've said this in our meetings. There's everybody's a freaking expert on marketing now. Um, but we also, as a marketing agency, we're one of the few that actually has a PR side. So the public relations part of this, a lot of people don't know how to do, and they don't have the contacts to do it. 
So sure. I think if I was going to pick three things, one would be in-house uh, production. So we have audio, video, all that stuff is under our roof, public relations, and then um, copywriting or what we would call now content marketing. That's cool. That's cool. So, okay. So let's talk about the audio visual. So okay. give me an example. Well, we learned we can, we can edit your zoom video if it craps out in the middle, <laughs> put them together and put little buffers and all that stuff. Um, audio visual work is, it, you know, there's a lot of ways you can take your, you can take your iPhone and do a pretty decent video now and put some stuff on it. And, you know, we're doing things like this, but a professional video or professional audio really needs an engineer. It's not just the guy pushing the start button. Um, and, that's one of those things where you have to have a little background in, in video and, and uh, what I'm calling video is what we used to call cinematography. So you have television, you've got uh, film and you have to understand how that works. Like if I was going to do this more professionally, I would block this out. There wouldn't be a window back here. I mean, there's all this stuff I would oh, yeah. change. Um, I do put a light in front of me. So it's so dark in this part of the room. I mean, it's, it's little things like that to help you understand what makes the good content. And so sure. we have the hardware and we have the software and we can take our portable equipment and go anywhere and do the production and have it be a high quality professional production like you'd see on a TV commercial. And, and actually television commercials made in the studio or made by a TV station are very low quality. So they're, they're done quickly and just plug them out and get the message out there so they can make money off of it. Sure. Um, so that, that's kind of where that lands and the audio production has to do with podcasts and making sure the audio in a video is really good. You know, I, I'm working with my laptop microphone here, but I have, I have ones that clip on and we can do all that sort of thing. But it's, it's really about what it looks like to the guy watching on the other side. The, a video without good audio might as well not even be there. That's cool, good to know. All right, so we have about uh, two minutes. Okay. Give me a quick story, to share a quick story, how your ability with PR was able to do something really cool for another company. Quick story. I can do, I can do that right now. Last week uh, we had the, with the coronavirus, we're all dealing with that right now. One of my longtime clients called up and said, we have this thing we need to get in in front of people. They're making filters to go over the N95 mask or that can be adjusted to be a mask. And they have all the same uh, attributes. So they needed to tell the world that they had these. They were donating something like 500 hospitals all over the country, and they didn't know how to get it out. So I wrote the PR piece, got it out there, and last I looked, it hit 24 million on the, the receivers, or there were 24 million receivers of that PR piece. And I already know they've gotten TV slots. They got, I got a call two days ago for another TV interview for them. And it's because of what they are and what they're doing. And it's, it's, it's 3 million bucks or something like that in a donation from them. So that really helped. Wow. I like doing stuff like that, that really make a difference in the end. That's cool. So um, give me one or two specific requests that maybe the group can help you with two, just two targets that you're trying to target right now in less than 30 seconds? Uh, one would be real estate agents. We're looking to be able to do walkthrough video for them. We can go in and do it. You don't have to be there or, or you know, however you want to set that up and do the walkthrough, get you all that, edit it, get it back to you, do voiceover on it. Um, the other one would be medical practices or organizations that are tied to medical offices that need to get their word out on public relations based on the uh, the virus problem. So if they're needing to tell vendors or they need to tell clients or whoever, um, we can help them get that information out. It's not just public relations. It's also in and out communication. Awesome. Thank you, Jerry, for being uh, in behind the network. Thank you for all no of problem. your support. Thank you for being on the calls. Thank you for your support, your connection. Uh, just thank you overall. You're very welcome. And we appreciate you keeping everything going clean. Thanks. All right. Thanks.